What's up guys, Jacob here. I know it's been like <laughs> a super duper long time since you've heard my voice on this channel. It's been like, it's been like legit, it's been like two months. I'm not gonna lie to you, but that's okay. Uh, we're back today and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start a new series and it's gonna be something kind of different. I know I don't have a face cam, I'm, I'm lazy, but it's gonna be something kind of different. We're gonna go over um, a how to Photoshop series. So we're gonna start at the very beginning today and we're gonna get more advanced as the series goes. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I work at a job uh, where I use Photoshop every single day and uh, I also am a graphic design student right now. I changed my major actually, that's something that's happened. So I was computer science, I changed my major to graphic design uh, with a minor in uh, digital media production. Hold on, I'm going to move my mic here. And this is going to be a really kind of organic video. I'm not going to really cut it up or anything, so it's going to be kind of long, but um, you probably are skipping through this part, so I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. So this first video of the series, as you can tell by the title, whatever I name it, um, it's going to be kind of like an introduction to Photoshop, like what all the various tools do and uh, how to make them work. So we're going to go ahead and start a new layer. This is going to be the first thing you learn to do here. So we're going to go new and oops, new and stuff is going to open on the other screen for me. But uh, this is the 2017 version of Photoshop, I think. Let me make sure. Uh, yeah, this is CC 2017. Um, I get this for, I think it's $20 a month, uh, which I make back through graphic design. Because I'm a student, I get a discount. I think it's normally 60 or something. I'm not 100%. But we'll just uh, keep it on. Actually, you know what? We'll start here. So you can see here. Um, you've got a few different options here. These are all my recent ones. Yours will be blank if you just started here. Um, you can also search Adobe Stock for templates, but uh, this is your saved. This is also going to be empty, but there are a few options here. So what you're going to be doing probably for what you do is you're going to be sticking with web more than likely. Now you can use these other options here. Um, the other one that I would use is photo, but... Um, it really depends on what you're doing. So if you're if it's a photo, it's a photograph, you're gonna want a photo. If you're printing it, you want print. Art and illustration, that's if you're painting on it or something. Um, that's usually what I use just for just painting and, and drawing. Uh, web is uh, websites and things, and mobile. You can guess what mobile is. You've got all these phone options. Um, we're gonna stick today with we're just gonna use uh, photo just for this, the sake of this, and we'll stick with a five by seven or seven by five. Um, you know what? We'll do five by seven. So over here on the right, you see uh, some preset stuff, right? So uh, you see the width is width is seven inches. Um, there are also these options here. Height is five inches. You can change the orientation. Artboards you really don't need. Uh, you can include various different uh, workspaces. You work more with artboards and Illustrator, so you don't really have to have more than one. In my experience, you can uh, adjust the resolution. Here's a key tip. This is a pretty important tip. Um, if you're printing something, you want to go 300 uh, DPI or above. You don't want to go below 300 um, at all, ever, if you're printing something. Um, if you're using web, the standard is 72. Pretty sure. Let me check. Yeah, 72 is the web standard. Um, but for what we're doing, we're just going to stick with 300. Uh, and if you're printing as well, then you're going to want CMYK as a color. Only if you're printing something that's not a photograph, right? Um, if it's a photograph, you don't really have a choice but to go RGB because no camera shoots in CMYK. Um, but typically, if you're at a photo printer, then it'll work. We'll talk about that later. And our, we're going to go white for our background contents. There are some advanced options, but unless it's a printer-specific thing, you don't really need to change them ever. Um, those You can just ignore that. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do this. You can also name it and click this to save your preset. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm not going to save this. So we're just going to click create. And we're going to get our artboard here. That's what this is called. This is called our artboard. This is just our little workspace. Um, so the first thing we're going to kind of touch on is this toolbar over here. And this is a lot of options. I mean, and you can hold and you get all these other options. So we're going to go over them and kind of kind of try to try to get this here so what I'm gonna have you do right now is hit B on your keyboard 
and uh, we're just going to resize this. You can resize it by using the bracket tools. I'm going to resize it, and just we're just going to click here in this white, and this is going to pop up. And I would just pick red. You can drag this little guy. You can change the color and pick red. This is the color you're going to have. And just go all the way up here, click and drag around, and it changes your color. Or you can even pick a color with the eyedropper tool, which we'll talk about right out here. So we're going to use the red, though. Say OK. And I'm just going to make just some lines here, um, just for the sake of demonstration for some stuff. And this is just so you can play around with this, too. So uh, what we're going to do here first, we're going to start with um, your move tool. Right? You just have to click on it once. You can just do move tool. Um, and we'll talk about this. So your move tool basically um, will let you move a layer around. Um, so what I'll have you do is go over here to where it says background layer right here and click this little lock. And so with your move tool selected, you can also hit V on your keyboard. You can just scooch this layer around. Right, and since it's the only layer, there's transparency back here, which we'll talk about in a further tutorial. But for now, this is all you really need to know. And also, you'll notice with the move tool selected, there are these little boxes here. And these boxes, if you click and drag, will let you adjust the, the pretty much the uh, the x and y axis of this guy, the width and height of the actual image. Right, so it's relative to the canvas. So up here by my mouse in this area right here when I click on it up there there's a little box that says your width and height of the actual image not the canvas this transparency area this 5 by 7 we made is the canvas but um, this is the image itself so we'll resize this you can also while you're holding and clicking and dragging you can hold shift and it will maintain that aspect ratio if you hold shift and click and drag it'll maintain whatever aspect ratio you're at once you hold shift and also if you hold alt and shift or just alt I'll do alt and shift you start from the anchor point in the middle and that's also something you can move you can shoot scooch this around and adjust where that anchor point is and how it works um, but uh, as for now it's not really necessary so we're gonna just uh, go back out of here and you can hit, uh, uh, you, for now, you can just do edit, um, step backward right here, or alt control Z to go back, uh, which we'll just do that for now. Um, but moving on, so this artboard tool, you don't really need that. I mean, you can use it to make a new artboard out here um, if you want to. We are not going to, so it's not really necessary at all. Um, it, it's much more common in Illustrator, and I'll try to learn Illustrator a little better so I can have some tutorials about that, but that's that's not a problem at all. So we're going to move on here to our Marquee tool. Now, our Marquee tool is really useful in selection. So it, it lets you select a part of the canvas in a specific shape, right? So uh, the most important one we use is the Rectangular Marquee tool. Now, there's a circular one too, but the Rectangular Marquee tool is kind of cool. So um, what I like to do with this is just go in and delete large areas right so large pretty well defined areas so if we want to delete this entire red piece here right if we want to delete the entire red piece you want to click up here and you want to drag you're gonna get these little dots okay and once you release you'll have this little section here with these marching ants which is what we call those these little marching ants and you can click and drag the selection so you can put it wherever you want, but I want to delete this one red piece, right? So I put the selector tool here, and I click delete, and this pops up. If you don't have a layer under your background layer, oh, that's why. Let me unlock this like we did earlier. If this, if it's locked for you, still unlock it. Just click the little lock. Uh, but we have this selected, right? So I click delete, and boom, it deletes it. This is especially useful if you have a white underlayer or a solid color underlayer here uh, and you want to get rid of a part of the image so I don't want this little piece so I select it and hit delete with a white layer underneath and that's what I have right so that's pretty cool um, another thing you can do with this is hold shift and you get a perfect square so if you want a perfect square 
in the right in the smack center of this. You just hit delete, and boom, you've got a little perfect square, and you can throw some lorem ipsum in there, and uh, that'll work fine. To deselect, control D, but we're just going over what the tools do. I'm going to speed along here. This is a lasso tool. The lasso tool and all of its little family here is used to select irregular shapes. Right, it's free form, so you can do whatever you want. Uh, it works kind of like a pencil. So you click and drag and complete the circle and you've got this selection you can move wherever you want this works really well if you're uh, working with text or something uh, also you have the magic wand tool um, it's really useful if you want to select something that is um, one solid color so if I wanted to select this red I'd make sure the red layer is selected here and click it right and now I can delete it and there I mean it didn't do a great job but we'll go over this a little bit better later on what you can do with this also in here you have a quick selection tool which is if uh, your color is not one color all together um, but it is maybe shades of the same color or it stands out from the background right so uh, if you wanted to you could click and drag and paint over the color you can add white here um, it's really handy in photography we'll go over that later too here you have the crop tool um, and the perspective crop tool uh, slice tools if you're working with websites we won't go over that now but um, the crop tool is pretty cool. It lets you uh, crop down the image to whatever you want. Again, if you hold shift, you maintain the aspect ratio. So it'll fill 5 by 7 if you print that. Um, that's pretty much it. You, I mean, you can change the settings up here to what ratio you want it. If you want it to be uh, 4 by 5 or 5 by 7, you can, you can adjust that here. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that now. This is the eyedropper tool. Uh, and some of the stuff isn't really necessary like the color sampler you can use that you can use the 3d material eyedropper tool those are if you need them um, the ruler tool also is not super necessary it just kind of lets you know <laughs> how, how far apart things are um, but the eyedropper tool I hardly ever use it by itself because you can also open this color picker here and you get one automatically um, and you can pick colors from here uh, but the eyedropper tool essentially lets you sample a color in the foreground uh, or background, whichever one you have selected. Um, and that's it. You just literally pick a color. It's kind of cool because it has this little ellipse that comes up. Um, and so if you have, let's just slap a gradient on here. Uh, let's, let's do this. Okay, so if you have, say... Uh, so if you have several different shades of the same color, then it will gradually show you that gradation, right? So you can kind of tell there, showing you that gradation. Maybe it's a little better over here. There you go. That's a little better. Um, but that's that's pretty cool about it. We're going to go over on now to the spot healing brush tool. And we'll get into the patch tool and the content aware move tool too a little bit later on. But the spot healing brush tool is pretty simple. So all you do with this this is really handy for retouching small areas on photographs in non-complicated places so uh, basically what you do if you hold alt and click on an area that you want to do um, click on this area here okay I don't, I don't need that um, just ignore that little thing and if you paint over it it will automatically find a spot it doesn't do a great job here you can't really tell but it'll find a spot in the image that is similar and it will match the shading it'll match, it'll try to blend that area in so say say if you have like a little tiny um, say let's call it let's just say there's a pimple right there right so if you grab your spot healing brush tool you can use J also uh, if you grab your spot healing brush tool and you slap that on there it takes that away so it that pimple gets sampled with another skin tone in your image and fixes itself um, this other stuff is pretty cool too healing brush does the same exact thing kind of where move tools more for images uh, red eye tools more for images patch tools more for images um, so we're gonna just move on from there we'll go over that stuff later you don't really those are more advanced tools we'll just go over the basic ones now so we're gonna talk about the brush tool now the pencil tool is in every program you've ever used ever so you know what that is brush tool as well um, same pretty much same deal you can paint stuff with it if you click on it um, you can adjust a lot of things up here different brush different brushes if I go here to window and brush um, it lets me adjust the dynamics of the brush so if I turn the jitter up then it, it does some funky stuff or 
Uh, maybe if I turn the roundness jitter on, it's more like this. Um, you can make your own brushes in this way. You can also work with some wet edges here. Uh, let's let's do uh, a little bit of texture. How about that? Texture is pretty cool. Uh, so let's see here. Toss it in there. We want to work with maybe this kind of texture, right? So do that. There's a little bit of texture. You have to play around with it to really get it to do a whole lot, but that's that's okay. It's not really too bad. Um, we're going to jump into the stamp tool now, the clone stamp tool. So clone stamp tool is really cool, especially if you're working. I use it a lot in graphic design, really. Um, you'd be surprised. Um, so what you do is pretty much the same as a spot thing. So if you hold alt, right, and you click on an area, you're presented with that area as, as a selection. You don't have to click and drag or anything. You're just there with it. So say you have, uh, we'll go to the brush tool. Say you have like a perfectly straight line with weird, funky stuff on it. But this part right here has a strange little weird thing in it, right? You just don't like it. So we grab our stamp tool and we hold alt and we pick an area that's similar. Let's say, let's say that area is right here. And you see, we have that. And it's not going to be perfect. It's kind of, this, you know, just to show, but if you stamp tool over that, then it pretty well fixes it. I mean, you don't have the area anymore. It works really well on straight lines. And you can make it a smaller area and work with it that way. But, um, you know, it, it's kind of the premise of what we're doing here. Uh, let's jump into the history brush tool. History brush tool is interesting. Um, it lets you jump back in whatever you've done before and essentially paint over previous areas um, of your document. I don't have any previous areas. It was all white to begin with. You really almost never use this ever. Um <laughs> I mean, it's you, you hardly ever use that or the art history brush tool. Um, you have the eraser. You also almost never use a background eraser. You can. I mean, if you want, it doesn't do it. Yeah, I mean, you can do the same thing with a lot of other tools. Uh, you know, the eraser paint bucket tool. That's pretty simple. 3D material drop tool. Don't worry about that. Gradient tool is pretty cool. That's what I used earlier. So up here, you can change uh, what you want the gradient to look like. So I want black to white. Actually, no, let's do orange to black. That's cool. You can change what type. We'll do a radial gradient and we'll reverse it. So if I start in the middle, go out, boom, you've got a radial gradient. Or if I don't reverse it and I start in the middle and go out, boom, you got kind of a cool little background for stuff, right? That's pretty neat. So that's what that's for. Uh, it's really useful in making things look like they belong or in logo design and stuff. Uh, blur, blur sharp and smudge. You use these more in painting than anything really uh, you've got your dodge burn sponge these are more for photo editing or retouching colorizing stuff like that pin tools pretty neat uh, you'll use this a lot and you can get to these tools here uh, with uh, key commands while you're in the pin tool so pin tool the way it works and there'll be a whole video dedicated to the pin tool um, you click in a spot you click in another spot and hold it and you can match curves and this is a really cool kind of thing. So you can import a picture and go around the picture. And I mean, you can make it into a selection by right clicking and say, make selection. Let's pop up, say, okay. And then you can move, I mean, you can move that selection around after you use the pen tool. So this is a really powerful tool and it's extremely useful and you'll use it a ton. If you're doing graphic design, you use it also a lot if you're doing photo retouching or colorizing. Um, text tool is pretty straightforward. So, uh, Laura Mipsum, uh, we'll toss that in there. You can just type whatever you please. You can adjust the size. Let's make it black so you can see it. And we'll use a type kit font. Oh, my, they're not syncing. Oh no. It's all right. We'll use this guy. I got a Disney font here. That's pretty cool. Uh, you'll use that a ton too. I'm saying everything's cool here. This isn't a, this isn't a review. Um, this guy, I mean, you're, this is just a selection tool. You really won't use this ever. You've got your shape tool here. You get to that with you and you've got all these different shapes, but they're pretty simple. You can fix it. Uh, your properties here will pop up and you can change the stroke. If you want a black stroke around it, I don't like it that big. Let's scale it down a little bit. Um, you know, just easy stuff like that. 
Uh, you can also click and define uh, different attributes if you need it to be specific, but I don't really need this to be specific. So um, we'll jump into the hand tool. This lets you move around your canvas if you're zoomed in. So what we'll do, I'll have you hold control and hit plus and you'll move into your image, right? So what you wanna do, this is a super easy way. So hit V on your keyboard and it'll bring you to the move tool. And if you hold space bar, you can literally just click and drag and move all around wherever you want. And you let space go, then you're, I mean, you're done, but you can click and, I mean, it's way easier than going and hitting H to get to the hand tool. You can just, I mean, you can have any tool selected at all. So let's open the pen tool and hold space, you can move around. So, I mean, the hand tool is pretty unnecessary but it is what it is. Um, you've also got the zoom tool, which I just showed you. Instead of hitting Z and adjusting the parameters, you can just hit Control plus or minus and do it that way. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, this is your foreground color, this is your background color. This switches them and this makes them black and white. Uh, this also here, you're looking at um, different toolbar editing things. We don't want that, that's just a quick mask. Um, this is also uh, different screen modes Would you get by hitting F. <laughs> that's, I mean, it's, I mean it's, it's all pretty straightforward. It's when you use the tools, that's kind of difficult. This is your little uh, task manager here, taskbar, whatever you call it, options. Uh, all these things have various uh, options in them. So if you if you have a if you have a layer selected that is a certain has certain properties you can adjust it or add things to it, um, just various stuff like that. This is usually where your tool options are. So if I open like the selector, this changes, this guy changes. Um, this is like a little toolbar uh, window area. So if you go to window, and let's say I do want the brush open, it's just right here. So it's already it's already commanded into here. And that's, that's literally it. So if I have my brush tool open, I can just open this guy and just paint in this way or change the brush to this guy, you know. I mean, it's a really neat little thing uh, they built in to Photoshop, just having this option here. And some of these are actually pretty cool. Some of these work really well for, like, fog or uh, something like that. But that's grass. It's a really nice guy. I have to use that. I didn't realize the grass was there. Put some leaves in there. <laughs> it's just, it's sometimes it's fun to just jump in here and play around with stuff with brushes that people actually knew how to make. You know, I've never really even come in here and looked at these. I don't have a mess. I don't have a reason to, but I do like that grass one. The grass one is really tough to go. I have to go grab that. Where you at? Where you at, grass? Hey, there. You, what is this? It's more grass. Hey. Nah, I like this one. This one's better. You just get one blade of grass. All right, but yeah, no, that's, I mean, this is, a, that's essentially all when it comes to Photoshop. This is the la the layers panel. Um, I mean, that's, <laughs> you use this, you can click and drag and re reorder layers. But, I mean, this kind of stuff is what we'll get into uh, later. I just want you to be familiar with terms when I use them. So, I'm going to be using these terms a lot. Um, all these tools, I'll have macros for them. Um, I'll have just a ton of stuff. <laughs> just I'll just use a ton of stuff. But the cool thing about it is I'm going to try to go slow. I'm going to try to be pretty organic and not edit through these things so you can follow along with me. So this, if you're familiar with Photoshop, this series might not be for you until later um, when I start introducing some techniques and tips. But if you are not familiar with Photoshop, then this hopefully this helps you out a lot. And this helps you get kind of more of a grasp on how to do it. Um, so what I'm going to assign to you is I want you to do what I just did. I just want you to go through all the tools. I want you to just play around with it, mess around with everything you possibly can. I mean, just, I mean, select layers and go up here to, I mean, filter and blur it. And I mean, just click on everything. It's hard to get the hang of stuff when you have absolutely no idea what the buttons do. So your assignment is to just push all the buttons, literally push every button you possibly can. Hopefully this series is going to be cool for you guys. I'm really excited to, to put it on for you. Um, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. I try my best to get to as many people as I can. Um, we're still filtering out stuff from our Easy Cap Elgato video, um, but we, I, well, I am back, hopefully, 
and I'm going to try to make one of these videos as often as I can. So uh, next time, what we're going to go over, we're going to go over basic selections. So uh, what I've also assigned is that you try to have a picture ready. I'll go grab a picture before the next one. But we'll go over basic selections and how to kind of do basic photo manipulation. And that that's, I mean, selections are a huge part of what we do. So um, especially in photo manipulation or web graphics. So we'll go over that later. Um, but thanks, guys, so much for watching. And make sure you have an awesome day.